in this case, we are given uh, that is a question uh, particularly on our statistics grouped information. That is 32 learners, they wrote a mathematics test, right? So we are already given the number of learners, how many are they? Uh, that is 32. All of the students, the learners that we're given, the frequency, number of them, considering our frequency there, they are 32. So we are given a frequency table which is combined with the cumulative frequency as we do understand the information that is needed on our cumulative uh, frequency curve. So on this part, we are now told 2.1 to calculate or to find the values of P, Q, and R. That is the missing values on the table. There is a P, we have a Q, and there is R there. So the question is, how are we going to determine how? It's not a pattern that we see here. It is something that is calculated somehow, the cumulative frequencies. Remember, it is an addition from one to another. The first frequency given as five added to what? The previous class that we are not given, it means there was just simply a zero there. So it is just like zero plus five, which is going to give us a five. So this one corresponds exactly as it is here. So meaning to say, automatically our P is equal to what? To 5. How are we going to obtain the next term? We were adding from this. We are now at this point. Remember, we are now at this point. So we add 5 plus 5 to get this number 10. Same thing. This 10, it was added to this 10 to obtain a 20. It is a continuous thing. The same thing happened to the 20. It was added to 7 to give us what? To give us Q. So automatically you can see 20 plus 7 is what? 27. The Q that we are seeing there. It was simply from 20 plus 7. Which is 27. That is our Q here. That 27 was added to 3 to get 30. 30 was added to this one to give us 31. And then 31 plus this R must give us what? 32. If we add 31 plus R, we must get 32. So what is the value of R? Simply 32 minus 31, which was going to give us a 1. So R is equal to 1. In actual sense, there were so many ways of, of uh, obtaining this R. We can also work with uh, the frequencies here, the total. Remember, I told that there are 32 learners. So if we add everything that we see on the frequencies there, if we add everything that we see, we must obtain 32. The total here must be 32. So add all these, you are going to obtain 31. So that's 32 minus these numbers, the sum. You are going to obtain one there. All right, so that was another way. You are simply going to subtract all the frequencies from what? From 32. Because we are told that there are 32 of them. Then you can determine the value of R there. That was another way uh, of determining this. All right. Then 2.2, you are being told now to draw a cumulative frequency curve, which is the ogive of the data on the grid provided in the answer in the answer should be all right so that's the cumulative frequency as we do understand for us to have a cumulative frequency it is from those classes but you must consider 
the upper classes, the upper boundaries of the classes versus the cumulative frequencies. So if we check the upper classes, so we're not going to focus on this part of our frequency, this one. Ignore this. This part of your frequency, you ignore it. You work with the cumulative frequency. It's a cumulative frequency curve. So as we can see, the first one, we are dealing with upper class 30, which corresponds to, to 5. 40, which corresponds to, to 10. This is how it is going to be like. So you're going to have the first point, 30 versus what? 30 versus 5, according to the scale and diagram that we are given. It was 30 versus a 5. 30 here versus what? A 5. All right. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. So that is 5 is going to be in between. Uh, 5 is just going to be in between 4 and 6. So that's 30 versus what? 5 in between there. All right. 30 versus the given cumulative frequency. Then if we check on the other part, all right, let's consider the other one uh, that we are given. It was 40 corresponding to what? To 10. So you're going to mark that part, 40 corresponding to 10. This is the one that we can see here. Another one that was 50 versus 20, all right? So I think these are the ones that we can see here. 50 versus 20, all right? They already marked this one for us. So it's simply taking the upper classes, upper of those marks versus their cumulative uh, frequencies. Upper class to the cumulative frequency, upper class to the cumulative frequency like that, all right? So here, all right, why is it this board now? All right, let's try to have it this way. So we're just going to... Have those points. You mark the second one, I mean the other ones, the other ones, and so on. According to what we are given on these values. Upper class versus 27, 70 versus 30, 80 versus 31, 90 versus 32. So our graph was going to start from a certain point here. This is where it's going to start at 30 versus 5. Ending this like this. But we must have the cumulative frequency taken from the ground. Remember, it must start from the ground. So what are you going to do? You go back to the classes that we had. The first class, I said you use the lower class of that first class that you're given. The one that you see on the first class there. You use it as an upper class, but with a cumulative frequency of zero. So you're going to have a 20 there where X is less than 20, but with a cumulative frequency of zero so that our graph can start from the ground. So it will be 20 versus zero. Do not forget that. This point, you are not given it. You are the one who is supposed to figure out. From the first class, you use that first class as an upper class. I mean, the, the lower class of the first class, you use it as an upper class with a cumulative frequency of zero. So from there, uh, this cumulative frequency curve was going to be drawn, or the auger, if we're just going to need to join uh, the points that we are given, that we have marked on your graph. Just try to have uh, something which is uh, smooth. In your presentation something like that all right so that was the condition of an ogive where we are to have an ogive okay a cumulative frequency curve on the other end we are now given uh, that's um, use on 2.3 use the cumulative frequency graph which is the curve that we have, to determine the value of the median. Remember from the cumulative frequency curve, the median value can be determined as half of the distribution, halfway up, halfway up. 
Yes, there's guys you can consider the formulas that you have got half of N plus one, this and that. When you are working with the cumulative frequency curve, I told you guys that the formula for the position of that median, for its position, it is simply half way up. Just take the number that you're seeing and the maximum as it is for a consideration that you are working with that accumulative frequency curve. So the maximum value, as we can see, it was corresponding to what? 32. So that is half of 32, which is going to give us 16. So we are referring to the 16th or the 16th value position of that 16th from the cumulative frequencies where 16 is, we must consider straight to the graph. The corresponding value will be our median. The value that corresponds if we take this straight to the ground. So that was going to be an approximation of uh, 46 somewhere there. If we take this one straight, guys, it was just going to be uh, somewhere there. All right, let's see. Uh, it was just going to be somewhere around 46. All right, that's the problem now here. Uh, the dragging part, let's see, guys, if we're just going to win. I just needed a straight line here. Anyways, anyway, somewhere there. So it was going to be approximately around uh, 46. So we are simply saying uh, the median value was going to be uh, 46. So just plus or minus 2 on your answer, plus or minus 2, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. All those answers, they're fine. 49 uh, is fine. All right. So that is plus or minus 2 on what you have on your answers there. Then on the other part, we are given uh, from the cumulative frequency graph. Determine the number of learners who obtained a mark that is of more than 55. More than. Greater than 55. More than 55. So we are told from the mark, the mark 55. So you must consider from the marks here, from, from the marks but we need those ones who got or who obtained more than so 55 uh, let's say just approximately uh, somewhere there. so you're going to take from that point going up to the graph now you must take it straight to the graph right so it's unfortunate uh, this some of the instruments are not working properly but you're going to take it straight to the graph where it corresponds with the graph straight this was going to be approximately straight there at what at 24 this was gonna be at 24 this one all right so i don't know on your side maybe it was gonna be 25 or it was gonna be 23 as approximately plus or minus one for that location plus or minus one so it's 24 plus or minus one okay so that is uh it from the 55 those ones that corresponds there is 24 but we are told that it must be more than more than greater than that meaning to say from 55 going up to the last one that we obtained which corresponds to the maximum value according to our distribution of what 32 so in within 24 and 32 in within that is where we've got our answer in within because you're told is what it's more than greater than so thus the learners that obtained more than 55 will be what between 24 and 32 so for more than uh, 55 or more we're going to find the difference that's 32 minus what 32 minus uh, 24 the difference between these two so that is eight learners obtained marks that are greater than that are more than 
that are more than 55 more than 55 yeah at 55 we've got 24 that way there before there but we need more meaning we say starting from 25 so we're starting from 25 26 27 and like that so on this case you just find the difference you don't include that part if it was let's say a condition where they want those learners who are more who obtained more than or equal to let's say they said also equal to that 55 you must add a one on your answer to show that those learners, they are part of the answer. But here they said what? They're smaller. So the difference, starting from what? 25, 26, going up, or anything, anything that is more than 24. So this is how you attempt these typical questions. All you just need is to work out as many questions as you can as you are preparing yourselves for the exams that are ahead of time.